Hello, my name is Dr Anna Simmons. I'm a consultant clinical psychologist and director of Elysian Psychology. I wanted to talk to you today about remote working and how to keep our psychological and mental health well when we're working remotely. It may be something that's relatively new for a lot of us um, and we may by now, we're, we're a month or so as I film this into lockdown, we may have come up with some ways of working that work for us um, or it may be that we're really struggling. If you have pre-existing mental health difficulties, the isolation and what's happening in the world around you may be affecting you as well. So I hope to sort of help you with, with those things. Um, I think there's practical things we need to do uh, when we're working at home, for example, having our own space. Uh, designated space. Now this may be that it has to be a dining table um, or, or, or you may be, have the luxury of an office but wherever that might be um, keep it keep it just for you. Talk to the people that you live with and ask them to respect your you know that you need peace and quiet or your working hours so that they're not interrupting you um, and having a space that you don't necessarily need to tidy up every time you finish is important unless it's in a kind of family space. If you are sitting at the dining table and your children are then coming in for lunch or you're trying to work while other things are going on, it's obviously going to be very difficult. Um, so respecting others that when you know you have got your headphones in or when you are on a call, that they, that they can't interrupt you. So do communicate with the people around you so the expectations are set. Try and stick to working hours that, that work for you. So maybe they're a little bit altered because you're trying to do homeschooling and everything else, but I think it's about boundaries. And it being very important that your boundaries are set because it's very easy to, you know, if you're due to finish at five o'clock, just work a little bit longer or go back to do some work in the evenings. So really trying to be firm with yourself because having a work-life balance is incredibly important. And what we don't want to happen is for them to, they're going to blur as, as it is, but really blurring to two. So it's important that you have some sort of differentiation and you move yourself physically into a different space uh, when you finish working. Um, so at break times, you know, what would you do in a normal lunch break at work? Would you go out and get a sandwich? Well, you can't do that, but maybe that's when you should you could go for a walk, or maybe that's when you could do something different. Um, and I think making sure that you stay boundaried and with those with breaks and when you start and end the day is incredibly important. Um, I think it's about setting goals as well. So what is achievable? If you, if you are kind of homeschooling or homeschooling is going on around you. Um, I've heard, been speaking to people, clients and friends who said, you know, their bosses are quite anxious and so some of that gets passed down over lots of emails or, you know, they feel sort of uncontained because there's lots of extra pressure. So do stay focused on what you need to achieve that day so that you don't get distracted by other people uh, emailing you or whatever so you can get those, those goals done and met because then you'll feel good about working from home and you'll feel like you've done something productive and helpful. Um, I think it's also about keeping in touch with other people that you work with, isn't it? I had a virtual lunch with some colleagues the other day, which was lovely, because normally we'd sit and have lunch together in the office. So really reaching out to people and not feeling on your own and not feeling guilty for doing that as well. If you think if you were office based, you'd probably, I don't know, go to the photocopier, go make a coffee and you'd talk to somebody for five, ten minutes. So really don't worry if you're checking in with somebody from work, it's still work related. Um, and of course, you know, do check in with your boss as well. If you're struggling, I think it's important that, that you, you raise it as a difficulty so that their expectations are set and met as well as yours. So you're not feeling extra stressing, I've got to get this done, I've got to get this done, and you're actually really struggling to just get motivated or to, or to feel okay. Uh, motivation, again, at home can be very difficult. Um, having the routine will obviously help. Uh, just make your workspace as nice as it can be. You know, you sit in the morning and go, okay, just can do the first hour. You know, and then I'll go and get a coffee or sit with your coffee to start with and a couple of biscuits and say, okay, this is, this is a nice, this is okay, this is pleasant in a place to be. Uh, keep focused on how, how, you, how good you'll feel when you've done the work afterwards as well. That's really important. You'll feel like a sense of uh, reward because it may be that your job has changed or you're having to do it very differently and you still need to feel that you've got job satisfaction, that you're doing a good job. You know, we're children, we get stickers for doing well and things, don't we? Um, but when we're adults, nobody sometimes notices what we're doing. So really sort of saying to yourself, I did really well today, or that was really good that I did that and I got myself through that day or that bit of work or that meeting when actually I wasn't really feeling it at all. Um, I think if you have a pre-existing mental health issue, 
please be aware of your triggers. You probably know your triggers are things that set you up, set your mental health into a difficult place. And so being sensitive and aware of those, again, communicating that to the boss or, the, or whoever you feel comfortable um, in the workplace. Um, and just knowing that, you know, prevention is so much better than cure with mental health. So please don't, if you're struggling, a lot of people are in a bit of an existential, existential crisis as it is trying to work in this way and with what's going on in the external world. Um, so really trying to not let things build up do communicate seek the support from somebody like me or if you have some staff support or from friends don't let things build up please don't keep going and going and going and going and going and think well this is normal this is just how it is no it doesn't have to be like this please seek some support so that your mental health doesn't significantly deteriorate um you know or even that would be the similar case to the burnout as well for people working too hard um don't let yourself get to a point where it, you're really struggling um because of things that maybe you could have reached out for or done differently before. I think managers' expectations have to be different at the moment. Um, I certainly talked to my boss when this all happened. Um, I work at university two days a week and just said, can I split my work across the days for the next couple of weeks just till I get the children sorted with homeschooling and various other things? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. And I just felt a sense of relief at that. I thought, okay, good. Like I could, I know I've got some flexibility and the expectations of people around me will be very different as well. So think about what it is you need to make this doable and then reach out and see if that is possible. Um, yeah, don't, don't, don't be on your own on any level. We are physically isolated, but we don't have to be socially isolated, really. We can reach out, we can reach out um, to our colleagues and our friends as well. And being really strict with yourself, you know, do turn the laptop off and put it away at five o'clock or whatever time you work till. And, you know, sometimes it's very tempting, isn't it, to just go on and check that last email and kind of go, oh, I'll just, I'll just, I've got, or just to think I've got to do that one last thing. And you do that before you know it, you've done then like five other tasks and an hour has gone. So all most kind of maybe writing them down on a post-it note or on your phone or something thinking right first thing tomorrow I'm going to address these things and these are the th these uh, just remember to contact that person uh, but not maybe going onto your email system or your laptop to do that if you previously had emails on your phone maybe it's the time to take them off and just say right but when I'm back on line at nine o'clock I will do with those then but actually sitting at seven o'clock at night when I'm just relaxing isn't the time that I want to be you might automatically go to check those things so we have to be a little bit more self-disciplined don't we um uh, move your body physically around as well at break times. Try and get out the house. It does help, doesn't it? Um, luckily, the weather has been nice. But even if it's not nice, just get your coat on and go. And just even if it's just ten minutes, it will change your thoughts. If you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, or you know, at any point, if you think, oh. I, I, my thoughts are very intense I'm really feeling stressed here go outside just stand in the garden with a cup of tea for five minutes um, we have to when we uh, there's something I was reading an article um, the British Psychological Society I think it was them um, had um, contributed to um, today and it was about zoom fatigue but actually I think we can extend that to um, kind of video online remote fatigue can't we because it's very intense when we work in this way I certainly do all my therapy sessions now and all my meetings over over uh, video and um, we, you have to work a little bit harder to connect with people it's also very intense kind of looking at the screen as well all the time some people find it very hard seeing themselves as well so we're maybe not as aware of ourselves uh, usually but seeing ourselves in the top hand corner of the screen people the research would say people are finding that particularly difficult and that can exacerbate sort of stress and anxiety and this kind of fatigue because your thoughts are going all the time don't look okay is this all right da, da, da. and that mental processing is very exhausting so we might even be working harder if we're working remotely so you know, maybe you need to give yourself a bit of an extended lunch break or different breaks or break up looking at the computer to do other things if you can I do hope you found that helpful. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel if you would like to see other videos that I've done. Um, there's quite a fair few on there at the moment specifically related to COVID. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed or it just feels very different, um, do, do give those a watch and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.